Hi, this is Joanne Litton, the 4-H educator in Carroll County, to talk to you today about how to make effective posters. When choosing a poster topic, remember the KISS principle. Keep it simple, make it self-explanatory, stay with one idea. Also make sure your ideas are accurate and complete. To generate ideas, check out your 4-H project book and look at our website or the Indiana 4-H website. Then when you go to think of a title, use a catchy title, maybe a play on words, but also check out project requirements because some projects like photography have a set title you must use. The size of your poster must be a 22 inch by 28 inch size. You must display it horizontally you have to add a clear plastic cover, which we will describe later. It must have a stiff backing and you will want to leave room for the exhibit card that we will give you at fair check-in. Leave the room in the lower right corner. It should be four inches wide and five and a half inches tall. The size of your lettering depends on how far away your audience will be viewing your poster. If you are giving a demonstration and the last row is 50 feet away, your lettering must be two inches tall to be viewed. If you are showing the poster on a poster stand at the fairgrounds and the audience is within 10 feet, feel free to use three and a quarter inch height. When spacing your words, try to leave the same amount of space between each of the letters. For the space between the words, use a full letter size of space. Make sure you don't have any extra space like as in network or it makes it too hard to read. The second two examples are missing a space. So be careful when you're laying out your poster. Before you begin to lay out your poster on your poster board, do a rough sketch. One of the things you need to keep in mind is how many lines of words will you have? What spaces will be between these lines of words? Also, do you want to center top to bottom and left to right? When having extra room, put the extra room at the bottom so your poster doesn't appear top heavy. You have lots of lettering style options available to you. Make sure whichever one you choose is easy to read. I prefer the one in the upper left corner, which is Arial, because it doesn't have the extra feet or serifs like the Times New Roman does. But this is up to you. Be creative. Today we will show you six different ways to add lettering to your poster. The first is hand lettering. Feel free to measure lines and then use your own handwriting. The second way is to use a stencil. Place your stencil directly on your poster and draw around the letter. Be sure to close the gaps of the stenciled letters to make them a solid letter and easier to read. You could also use a stencil on paper, cut it out and glue it onto your poster. The trick is when you do that, turn your stencil upside down so that you are tracing it backwards. So when you cut it out, the pencil lines are not visible. A Fourth way to add lettering is to use the ready stick letters that you could purchase at an art supply store. You could use your computer to generate letters. On the left, we have typed out lines and cut them into strips before gluing down. The one on the right is made as an entire poster on the computer, print out six sheets of paper, cut and match together. When choosing color combinations, you will want to have a contrast between your background and your letter color so it's easy to read. You will also want to make sure that your background color doesn't distract from your message. Fluorescent colors as a background sometimes distract. When looking at these color combinations, which do you think are easiest to read? Other items to avoid are too many colors, being too cluttered, 
and the use of glitter. The use of graphic adds interest to your pictures. You can cut out pictures from a magazine, use stickers, or take your own photos. The finishing touches to any poster is to check it over, make sure all words are spelled correctly, and then erase those lines that you lightly put down to do your lettering. When the poster is done, you are ready for backing and plastic. The backing needs to be stiff enough so the poster will stand by itself on a poster frame and not fall over. You have several options for plastic. You could buy a plastic sleeve and slide your poster into it. You could buy heavy film that can be found where you buy fabric and cover it yourself, or you can shrink wrap it. Before you are totally done, verify that there are no additional 4-H requirements for your poster. Some posters are required to have references on the back. Some require a index card with your veterinarian's name and information like their address and phone number. And some projects have a certain title you must use like photography. You may want to create a poster box. This would be a tote that you would keep everything in to create posters, so it's easy to find the items when you need them. Two items I highly recommend you look for are the right kind of pencil, a pencil with the letters 4H or 5H for hardness versus a regular school pencil will provide for lighter lines and make it easier to erase. You will also want to buy a standalone eraser so that it's easy to erase those lines. These items can be found at any art supply store or a craft store. Our next slides are slides from State Fair. They show different techniques that have been used to catch your interest, such as the theme of the poster or the title, matting, graphics, lettering, and added effects. Isn't this a cute theme? Plus, they added real coins onto the poster. When adding something with extra weight, make sure you have glue that will keep it stuck to your poster board for the entire length of fair. This is a good example of a catchy title and a colorful border. Here is another catchy title, Have Many Good Manners. This title is a play on words. Cats are perfect pals. Remember the kiss principle? Keep it simple. These puzzle pieces certainly illustrate the theme. Here, the background matches the theme. The use of playing cards emphasize the theme of dealing with stress. The added effect in this poster is a spinner for the spinning wheel. This 4 -er drew around the shotguns for a matted look. The matting looks like negatives, perfect for a poster on photography. With photography, you also need to have small numbers for each of the photos so that when you talk with the judge, they can reference a particular picture. Both still leave the photos as the center of interest. Here is an example of using magazine pictures. Close-up photos can show lots of details. Graphics can be generated on the computer. Actual samples were used in this poster. When adding objects that gives your poster the 3D look, you will need to buy the film of plastic on a roll to wrap your project poster. These tubes of fat really emphasize the subject matter. Yarn has been used to connect the words with the bunny parts. Here, the answers are behind the door. For this added effect of matching words and breeds, you will need someone to assist you with putting wires and a battery pack on the back of your poster. 
I hope you have learned several new techniques for making an effective poster today. Please take a few minutes and click on the link to take a three question survey to help us with future programming. Thanks and have a great day.